If you're one of the 40 million Americans dealing with anxiety disorder, or perhaps you know somebody who is, this video is for you. We're going to talk about what triggers our anxiety and ways that we can manage those triggers. What are anxiety triggers? Well, all they are are stress from the outside world that can affect the balance of our brain. They come in many different shapes, sizes, and forms. There's the overscheduled hey, type of stress. Um, let's see. I think I can fit you in? The personal conflict. I'm getting kind of hungry. Yeah. Some suffering. <laughs> How about we try Luciano's Pizza? We haven't been there in a while. Are you serious? We're not going to Luciano's. Do you remember what happened last time we went there? What'd you call that? I thought you said Sorry. That spontaneous dental hydrofloating. Maybe it's health issues. Spontaneous dental hydroplosion? That sounds horrible. All of these stresses and so much more can combine to cause an accumulative stress. So one layer of stress on another, on another, on another, until it becomes too much and can trigger anxiety. Normal anxiety tends to help us, and it's a very common emotion for all human beings. It can help us get out of a terrible situation. Must go faster. Or prepare for an upcoming situation. But the problem is, for the 40 million people dealing with anxiety disorder, Anxiety can be a daily issue, and identifying the stress that has caused the anxiety can sometimes feel like it's impossible. The good news is there is a definitive way to identify your triggers and start to manage them so you can start feeling relief from anxiety and getting back to that life that you've always dreamed of. I like to think of it as the acronym IRS. Pretty clever, right? Even the acronym itself causes some people stress and anxiety. So IRS, I stands for identify your trigger. The way you do that is you keep a journal, whether it's on your cell phone, a pad and paper, or just mentally. Every time you feel anxious, go back a couple of hours, maybe even a couple of days and think, who did I talk to? Where did I go? What type of food was I eating? How have my sleep habits been? Have I been exercising? Have I had personal conflict? There's a lot of questions that you can start asking yourself to start identify and start connecting the dots. When this happens, I get anxious. Pretty soon you'll be able to start to connect more and more of those dots and you'll be able to figure out what has triggered your anxiety. The R in IRS stands for remove those triggers that you can. For a lot of people, this could be a busy schedule that causes stress. It's pretty easy to start weeding out one thing after another until your schedule starts to calm down or for sleep deprivation. Getting a little bit more sleep every night is an easy solution to that. But for those triggers we can't remove, that leads us to S, shrink those triggers. And the way you shrink triggers is to change the narrative in your brain. Science has come a long way in neurology and they know very well that the brain is plastic, which means it has the ability to make new connections between parts of the brain. So just like a kid learning multiplication facts, eventually they rehearse, 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 and then they get it because they use it frequently and they use it for the rest of their life. The same thing can be true when you have triggers, you usually have thoughts or feelings associated with those triggers. If you have a lack of sleep, you might start fearing and thinking you're never going to get to sleep. It's easy to start changing that narrative in your mind and think to yourself, it's really not that awful that you went a couple of nights with only a couple hours of sleep. Sure, you feel bad and sluggish and you can't think, but eventually you will get to sleep. In fact, Navy SEALs during Hell Week go six to seven days with pretty much no sleep and they survive that ordeal. So a couple of days is not going to hurt you. Those are the things that you can do and change the narrative. If personal conflict is a big deal to you, you can think, Conflict is a means for growth. Everyone experiences conflict, so you might as well get really good at that. Whatever it is, the idea is to start doing some positive self-talk, which is scientifically proven to start changing the way that your brain behaves when certain stimulus from the outside world or certain triggers arise that can tend to get us anxious. So that's 
it. That is all. I-R-S. Identify those triggers, remove the ones that you can, and shrink the ones that remain. If you start to do these things, these are things that counselors and psychologists will tell their patients to do all the time. It's simply rewiring the way you think about your triggers and being smart and eliminating some of the ones that we can. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you thought this was helpful, maybe you could pass this video on to somebody you know. And please consider subscribing below. It's just a way to show support for this channel. Here at Figuring Us Out, I love to dive into anything uniquely human. The puzzling, the funny, the intriguing, anything where we can take a bit of information and grow from it and have a better life ourselves, I'm all for it. Hey, thanks for watching.